Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at Barry Windsor Smith, Storyteller. All right, so these are super cool. First of all, I, I wanna say that uh, with Barry Smith's Monsters, the long-awaited uh, Monsters uh, epic op magnum opus graphic novel from Barry Windsor Smith uh, that just came out recently from Fanagraphics, uh, 30 plus years in the making. It's completely gorgeous, did a video on it. I'll try to remember to link it if you care. Um, but anyway, so I just feel like uh, there's been buzz around Barry Windsor Smith lately because um, <clears throat> he kind of disappeared for a long time working on this book. And now that it's finally out, it's fantastic. Uh, it's really, really, truly breathtaking. So I figure it's a good time to look at some of his older stuff. And this is like post-Marvel. This is like 1996, I think. And um, he did this at uh dark horse and they it's an anthology so there's three separate stories each month and they're all done by bws barry Windsor smith we'll call him bws or or maybe not all the time i don't know whatever uh so anyway please subscribe to my channel hit like share all that good stuff uh this is quite impressive here and um he did this great interview about monsters recently and he talked a little bit about this I mean, he really put his heart and his soul into this. I mean, he's writing, he's penciling, he's inking, not completely inking, but in helping with colors too. Um, so, I mean, this is just freaking breathtaking. But he said that uh, lack of, um, what do you call it, uh, promotion on the part of Dark Horse really hurt the book and led to bad sales. And another thing that led to bad sales apparently is the size of the book, because this is like, you know, bigger than a magazine, really. And um, apparently uh, collectors didn't know how to store it or uh, didn't like the size because it didn't fit into their long boxes. And if that killed this book, shame on everyone who said that, because that is completely ridiculous. I mean, I got this book. I loved it. It's amazing. It's Barry Windsor Smith art. You just buy it. It doesn't matter what size it is, the guys. It doesn't matter if you have to store it somewhere else. I mean, I'm pretty sure they have, uh, I wonder if a magazine box is even big enough for this, but whatever. I mean, the art totally deserves to be bigger because, and it was probably drawn at a larger size than this, but this is still bigger than standard comic book size. And you have your classic, gorgeous Barry Windsor Smith art. I mean, this double page spread alone is breathtaking. And when I say he pulled out all the stops, I mean, he just really pulled out all the stops. I mean, it's like this throughout. I mean, it's just kind of amazing. I don't know what his actual work process is, but I know that um, he did use some, like some artists, assistants and stuff like that. and. I think there's a debate like over how much help he had on a lot of his art, but you know, something this detailed and this, you know, I was an inking assistant, um, basically spotting blacks. So, I mean, anybody can really do that without any talent at all. And it's just kind of one of the mundane tasks of uh, creating comic books, kind of like how colorists now that computer colors are done. Um, a lot of colorists use flatters, which is basically uh, uh, a mundane part of the coloring process, but it saves a lot of time if you have someone else do it. You know, I mean, I think this was monthly when it came out, which is crazy in itself. Um, it might have been bi-monthly, which makes more sense. I mean... Look at this. This is just crazy. You know, Barry uh, Smith really broke out with uh, Conan is when he changed his style after doing a pretty much typical superhero Mar Marvel house style. And then when I discovered him, I want to say Life, Death, uh, you know, the Storm story and the X-Men. I mean, that was life changing. I loved his art. I had never seen anything like it before. I mean, aside from, you know, Botticelli and... Alphonse Mucha and all the Raphael, Raphael, Raphael Etz. <laughs> I just love, I mean, 
you know, this is amazing brush work and just like the pen and ink here. And you've got all this great hatching. I love the way that he hatches. It's funny because he said in that interview, um, parts of him almost wish he didn't discover this style because it's so time consuming, but so worth it. This paradox, man. It's funny because the, the freebooters is kind of like, uh, a Conan story. And then the paradox man is like, uh, very science fiction, very cool. You know, he definitely has a different sensibility with his writing, and um, I think perhaps it's because he's English, I don't know. But this is cool, I just love this. You got dinosaurs, which, who doesn't love to see dinosaurs? And then he encounters these aliens and this craft. So this is great, like, uh, if I feel like anthologies don't generally do that well, and I freaking love anthologies, like, I love, you know, just different stories with different characters and different, you know, settings all in the same book, especially if they're done by the same person. How cool is that? It's like you're getting three different comics for the price of one here because they're all continuing stories anyway. I mean, that is just beautiful. Issue one and done. So then Paradox Man takes the cover on the second issue. And I just love Barry Windsor Smith's art so much. It's like, uh, he just draws everything so well. You know, it's like with the Weapon X or Machine Man, you know, he draws this really cool machinery. I love this opening sequence here. And I have to say, like, I love the design of the book as well. It's sort of like got that stained glass, you know, period piece, kind of Alphonse Mucha, Art Nouveau kind of Thing going on that I totally love that aesthetic. This is like the creepy best stuff that uh, Barry Windsor Smith draws. You know, it's evocative of Weapon X or uh, in monsters when they're like experimenting and stuff like that in creepy labs. He definitely captures mood very well. I'm into paranormal and aliens. I mean, we're hot on the heels of the government revealing that aliens are real. So I think that uh, this is gross turning into like a, or this big insect thing. It's very uh, Naked Lunch-esque, very creepy. I mean, this is so cinematic, I love it. Like I can just see this in a movie, like her sitting at the desk talking to him and you can see like the flying cars in the city behind him. Very cool. I mean, just look at this. Look at all that detail and all that just perfect, you know, perspective and just a man with a sheet of white paper, a pot of black ink and a quill and a brush. I mean, the magic that you can make. So you don't need an iPad or Procreate, although God, they are fun, I have to say, but you can, I mean, this is like the purest beauty of comic art. I mean, who could look at this and not just marvel at the kind of, that's cool there. Marvel at the detail and the, I don't know, you know, and it just, it doesn't look cluttered. It just looks so cool. I mean, and it's like, you have this all throughout, like, <clears throat> how can you in like basically a monthly comic book just pull out the stops and do this kind of crazy stuff? Like insane. Artists are nuts. I know I'm one of them. I mean, it just, the pure, this is very, I like this because it's very, uh, the Young Gods is very Kirby influenced, sort of like the New Gods in a way, fourth world kind of aesthetic, but of course, very much his own style. It's weird because, you know, throughout uh, comic book history, you see a lot of uh, clones or people who are highly influenced by other artists. And I can't really think of too many artists or any artists for that matter, who really just copied this kind of style and went for it. A masochist, I guess. I mean, it, it, all this detail and wanting to do that. It's funny because you can always see, like, speaking of Kirby, there's like 
the Kirby crackle. It's in the DNA of every comic book artist. Anybody who's ever read an old Marvel comic and saw Kirby crackle and had any aspirations to draw has either drawn it or wanted to. And that's a frickin' fact right there. The art is just so gorgeous. If you guys haven't seen this, I recommend getting it. It's beautiful. It's perfect to satiate your appetite for more Barry Windsor Smith after Monsters busts this out. Totally worth a second look if you've already read it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.